guys. Welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody is having a great day. I am definitely not having a great day. I just found out my daughter cut her finger, just a minor little cut yesterday at work, but it swelled up right away. And of course, she's a procrastinator like her mother said she would just get up this morning early if it was bad and go then. Well, she couldn't even barely sleep. The pain was so bad. So she ended up going to the hospital at 6.30 this morning. And finally, they told her they can't deal with it at our hospital and that she would have to see a surgeon in the city. So she's on her way to see him now. She said she overheard one of the nurses say something about possibly removing the finger. So she's really scared. And of course, so am I. Anyways, let's keep her in our thoughts, okay? Okay, so enough of the jibber-jabber. Let's get right to the story. Hello, my cryptid queen. I knew when I heard your voice that I would eventually be telling you what happened to me and my sons. It's so refreshing to hear a woman who is not only interested in Bigfoot, but also very well informed. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Believe me, I often spoke about Bigfoot while out on dates or with friends, only to be told that they just don't exist. And it's a stupid waste of time talking about it. Well, I happen to know different, and this is why. Back in 2000, my wife and I divorced, and I had my two young boys for the summer. Most of the time, we spend it in the wilderness. Their mother was always at the spa while I was teaching the boys how to live and survive in the woods. Now that we know what really does exist, we always go heavily armed and always in a tin can. Not full-blown safe, but a lot better than sleeping in a tent or under the stars. So in 2000, my oldest boy was 11 and his brother was 9. We loved hiking in the mountains and the hills near Casadero, Oregon. Hope I said that right. Plus, that year, we tried whitewater rafting. What a blast, and yes, we are hooked. Anyway, we were given a map by a friend of mine who had also taken his family hiking near that same area that year. They said that they were off the beaten path and had the time of their lives. The boys and I decided to start off our vacation with a rafting trip down the Clackamas River. We were really hopeful to get a good view of the area that we wanted to camp in. It was so worth the money. We got much more than we bargained for. After rafting was over, we were all pretty spent, but we pushed on and found a great place pretty close to where our friends recommended. We were probably 35 feet from the river, but we looked down on a small beach right beside the river. We would have preferred to be right on the river, but the incline was too steep and we had a difficult time finding a spot large enough to make our camp on. Like I said, we were pretty tired, so we made do with a spot a little further up the hill from the river. We ended up passing out about 9 p.m., it was still light out, but we were beat. So that night, we were woken up throughout the night, hearing odd vocals that we just couldn't place. They weren't scary, but they were clearly communicating and didn't seem to care that we could hear them. The boys were thrilled trying to guess the type of animal, but I had to calm them down and make them go back to sleep. The next morning, about 5.30, the boys woke me up saying that they saw monsters at the water. They tried describing them, but they just kept whispering that they were men who looked like giants with heavy fur coats. So I calmed them down and I asked, did the monsters see them? And they said no. So I said, okay, stay in here, and I snuck out of the tent. I heard the sounds of the water splashing, like the kids playing in a lake. I should mention that we were in an area where the river wasn't running very fast, so I was careful to keep behind shrubs and trees, and I walked quite a ways from our camp, so I was upstream. I figured that maybe they might have been aware that my boys had been watching them, so I wanted to sneak up on them and to watch them without their knowledge. At this point, to be honest, I was fairly certain I knew what they were. 
I had heard about Sasquatch from friends of mine from the Umpqua people. I'm sorry if I destroyed that. I had assumed that they were just hairy people who kept to themselves. Well, I was set up for a complete eye-opener. Never in my wildest dreams did I expect what I saw. I had walked a little too far upstream, and I kept walking slowly towards where I estimated our beach would be, and then I saw what should never, never exist in our world. I don't understand evolution. However, I do believe in it. What I was looking at was supposed to have died out during the Ice Age. At first I saw one female with her whole body covered in hair, mainly short hair, but in spots she did have longer hair. Her breasts were large, but they were not full at all. She appeared to be about seven feet tall. Then another female stood up. They appeared to be looking around as if something scared them. Then, one by one, little ones appeared, till there was three younger ones of various ages that came out from behind their mothers. Then I saw a baby clinging to the back of the first female that I had seen. It was holding on to the middle of her back with its hands and feet. Its feet seemed to have an opposable toe like a gorilla's does. I saw the females start to peek out from behind the bushes and look across the river to the side of the beach just below our camp. And I realized those boys had snuck out of the tent even after I told them not to. I was completely enthralled and I wanted to watch but the Sasquatch were very nervous. And then I saw rocks flying across the river towards them, and I was livid. I had a chance of a lifetime, and my sons were being complete jackasses. It didn't take long for one of the rocks to hit the shoreline, and that was it. All of them took off running into the woods. I think they dropped down on all fours, because I didn't see them after that. So to finish this story, as I said, I was livid. I went back to camp and I packed up the camp and the boys apologized over and over. But they have always been taught to never abuse animals and to respect their surroundings. Plus, I asked them what they would have done if one of those bigger ones would have responded with violence. They could have been killed. So yes, before I get judged, it was a lesson they needed to learn. And learn they did. The oldest one works for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the youngest one is in veterinary school. So I think that I made the right decision. Please take care. Signed, John Roberts. Well, John, I think it goes without saying, I would never judge another parent for how they discipline their children, but I'm pretty sure I would have done the same thing or at least I would have hoped to have done the same thing because it seemed to me that was the right decision. What an amazing story. I wish it was just a little bit longer. Anyways, I hope everybody enjoyed this as much as I did. Please do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe. And of course, you guys know I love ya. Have a great day and we'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.